Hey guys, Adam here as per usual. Thanks for continuing to check out the vids. Thanks for the continued support. Full breakdown of the guitar setup that I'm using live and in the studio. There's not gonna be much, if anything, in the way of actual recordings and audio samples, etc. in this video. We'll do some tones and stuff in a later video or check out other videos I already have. There's loads of stuff on there. But I'm gonna sort of walk through signal pack, show you guys what I've got going on. Might be in for a couple of surprises in a few little places other things kind of tried and tested that you know I've been using for years. Before we start talking guitars, I should quickly say that um, using Gravity Picks Classic Mini 2, um, pretty much exclusively now, 99.9% .9 of the time, Gravity Picks Classic Mini 2. Majority of cabling, but eventually all cabling, will be made by myself, uh, iron tone cable stuff. So guitar number one, of course, <clears throat> the famed Sir S4 absolute daddy of a guitar oh it's got a nice little chip in the back there scratches chips you know gets played i'm not someone who sit and collect and looks at guitars i play them if i don't play them for a while they get moved on you know not that nostalgic about guitars other than this one if this never gets played again it'll still sit here in my room because it just means a lot to me yeah sir s4 is as close to a kind of custom guitars i was ever going to have available basically a sir s4 basswood body with maple cap on top in a sort of translucent Denimy purpley bluey colour, gold hardware which was a kind of extra, I just really wanted gold and of course maple um, maple, maple neck and board there. Yeah so originally when I originally got the S4 it had the, the Sir pickups in which were, which were really good, you know I quite liked them but um, you know I like to experiment with pickups quite a lot and always gravitate towards lace sensor stuff. So it, it had a total rewire so it's re rewired a, a lot simpler, a lot more like a Strat. The way that Sir wired that guitar's up, uh, they come with lots of capacitors and resistors and things loaded on kind of a mega switch to really sort of um, achieve the ultimate load and ultimate signal etc for their pickups. So obviously when I put these pickups in I just wanted to go back to a simpler Strat style wiring. Um, so we've got a five way switch and a push push pot on the tone to split the, the humbucker there. So in the bridge we've got the, the Damasio and AT1, Damasio Andy Timmons. Then in the, the middle we've got the Fender Lace Sensor Silver and Fender Lace Sensor Blue in the neck. As far as I'm aware these are just um, Lace Sensor pickups that Lace made for Fender that they then branded Fender in the late 80s, early 90s I believe for like the Super Strat and the Strat Plus models I believe. Otherwise everything else is stock, no kind of modifications to it. Always fancy the kind of white perloid pick guard on here but never got around to it. So yeah, if I could only have one guitar it would be this one. It's kind of a real jack of all trades and a master of some as well. Gets absolutely loads of use, it's just a hotter strat. Next up is the Ibanez SV470. It wouldn't be fair to call this a number two guitar because at the moment it's probably the number one. With the projects I'm involved in with the band it's set up to be kind of like a, a heavy metal guitar. Not ultra ultra modern in terms of tone you know that's not what i go for but a heavy metal kind of guitar the sv470 was only made for a short time i think in the early 90s uh, early to mid 90s i believe this was a 1995 model and um, that i got about 13 14 months ago and played it and loved it it's it's a little bit battered it's a little bit bruised but it still plays wonderfully the neck profile on this they call the viper neck profile and it's a really nice probably my favorite kind of neck profile i've come across it's not totally flat and it's not totally round. It's somewhere in the middle of like a, in the middle of a modern scene, a flat neck. Recently just had a rewire. The, the pots and things were a little bit scratchy and a little bit dated. The switch was starting to, you know, scratch and stuff a little bit. So being completely rewired, new five way blade. A little bit simpler than the serve. Literally just got bridge. Uh, sorry, literally just got neck, neck and middle, middle, middle and bridge, bridge. One tone, one volume, really simple for kind of the, the heavy metal stuff. Pickups in this, in the bridge, I've got the uh, Briley pickups that my mate Pat hooked me up with, uh, A2 Hot, and in the neck, the A2. Um, really great, overwound sounding humbuckers, quite trebly, quite piercing if you don't tame them, but very, very clear. Got lots of bite and upper mid presence, really, really dig it. In the middle is just the Ibanez single coil that it came with and it's actually it's, it's a really nice sounding single coil. I don't use the middle pickup a whole load of the time. I'm normally split between the neck and the middle for my clean tones. But if I'm doing some really heavy strumming stuff, um, I'll go to the middle just so that the clean stays pure, you know. Something else on all my guitars, I always have the, I'm not sure how well you can see that, look how thin that body is as well, crazy. Um, I always have the middle pickup load quite significantly in the body. This is for two reasons. One is the, the playability, where I pick, I pick right where the middle pickup is. I know it's not the best technique in the world, but this is how I always learned. And what I'm finding is when I'm palm muting especially, or picking hard, I was hitting the pick against the pickup, and it was ruining the pole pieces in the pickup, and also grinding down my picks really quick. 
So it's something I just started doing years ago um, just to alleviate that problem. And also having it really far in just lowers the output significantly. So it means that I can go from quite a, a gainy tone, quite a gainy crunchy tone, flick it onto the middle pickup, not have to move the volume pot at all. And it's a lot less output and it cleans up really nicely. Another little trick I use a lot. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Play this all the time. You guys see it all the time. Ibanez SV470. This is the PRS SE Soap Bar 2 Maple. And um, yeah, absolutely digging this guitar. Only got it a couple of months back. Something very, very different for me. So I wanted something that's totally different to the Sir and the Ibanez. Because um, the Sir is kind of like my super strat, my kind of modern strat sound. The Ibanez the SV470 is kind of my metal and rock guitar. And this, I wanted something a bit different. I wanted something kind of Les Pauly, but not a Les Paul. So I was looking about and I found I found this, uh, the, the, the PRS. I've heard, obviously heard mixed reviews about the lower PRS stuff, but this one's, a, I think I've got a really good one here. And my friend that I bought it off set it up quite nicely for me with the action, probably even lower than I prefer. So we'll get that raised up a little bit. We've just got PRS soap bar pickups in here. They're very, very hot. They're, soap bars always sound to me like kind of overwound single coils which is kind of what they are. These sound to me more like slightly underwound, um, cooled around humbuckers. They, they really have quite a lot of output uh, that sits somewhere between the single coil and the humbucker, but it's really, really nice, really crunchy. Not, not completely noiseless, but I like it. It's got very usable gain tones and very usable clean tones. You can't use it for very high gain because it gets too noisy. Kind of warmer blue sound. Um, not quite a Les Paul, but kind of edging on a Les Paul, sits somewhere sort of between a Strat and a Les Paul. Really like this sound, it's um, it's it's on the album in a couple of places for, for different lead tones that just the Sir and the Ibanez can't get. Yeah, thinking about trying out some different soap bar pickups in, in here. I've heard really good things about the Lola, so, uh, Lola is it Lola or Lola uh, soap bar pickups from the US, so maybe checking those out very soon. Next up we've got the much humbler, much smaller pedal board and in all reality it could get smaller than this in the near future. Start off at the, the top right with the uh, Iron Tone interface. Just makes setting up and, and tearing down a lot quicker and a lot easier. It's got MIDI and also audio in and out. Then it goes into the Voodoo Lab Giggity. Uh, I'm quite digging the Giggity, but I'm not sure it's going to stay there. But that's that's kind of the rotating door, if you like. I'm trying out different pedals in sort of that position. Then we've got Crybaby Modified, uh, sorry, Iron Tone Modified Crybaby War. Then into the Boss TU3 Tuner. Iron Tone Crank Combo, Exotic Custom Shop BB Preamp MB. Really love the, the BB Preamp and even more versatile with the mid boost. You guys know I'm all about mids, loving it. And then we've got finally the Nady TD1 at the end. In all reality, I could probably get away with just the War, uh, the, the Crybaby, the Exotic OD, the Exotic BB or any other kind of overdrive there. And I could probably even get away without the Nady TD1. I could get away with a WAR, a tuner, and, a, and an overdrive pedal at the moment. But I'm just having a couple of different overdrives for a couple of different flavours when I fancy it, etc. All powered, of course, by Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus. And we've got the Hughes and Kettner FSM Mark II foot switch, MIDI foot switch. What I'm thinking uh, in the, the kind of next project is going to be to reduce the number of pedals on this board. I think down to a couple of overdrives in the tuner and get a bigger MIDI controller, a more versatile MIDI controller because this isn't doing everything I want but it is it is very manageable now at the moment you know but as the, as the rack gets a bit more complicated and I want to do a few extra things with it gonna need a different MIDI controller. So speaking of racks let's move over to the rack. Everything comes in at the bottom here in this kind of patch bay. I was gonna build all this into a 19 inch patch bay I just haven't got around to it yet to be totally honest with you. This is for all the audios, uh, signals in and out and then we got the MIDI signals in now because pretty much everything in the racks um, MIDI controllable as well. So it starts off by coming from the pedal board into channel 1 along the top here of the TL Audio Ivory Series EQ5013 valve equaliser. It's got a valve input and a valve output stage um, which is, is, is really really useful. So what I'm doing across in the first channel going straight into there this is before the amp, I cut a little bit of signal, cut a lot of bass, boost the mids quite substantially and cut out a little bit of treble. I do this because I like to really have the mid range hitting the amp hard and I don't want any of the bass or treble distorting that much. I want the mids to be kind of, I want the amp to be very mid rangey and sending a lot of mids into there and the amp really achieves this. From time to time I may tweak these EQ settings if I'm looking for different sounds but generally it's this. Then we're going into the amp which we'll talk about after. Then we come back out into channel two of the EQ. 
in the effects loop now so I have to run the effects loop I'm running the effects loop in serial at the moment and uh, thinking about getting a parallel and a, and a mixer setup going on but at the minute running everything in serial until we get a bigger rack and um, not cutting oh sorry also forgot to say at the end of um, the end of EQ1 I'm boosting the output quite substantially by around about 15 dB 12 to 15 dB this acts as just like a really slightly gritty boost and um, that really really hits the hits the amp hard you know it's I'm using it now in place of the Bob Burke clean boost which really hits the amp hard get a lot of that extra chunkiness and a lot of that extra grind out channel 2 we bring in most of the bass that we'd cut out so now what this achieves is we get the bass back so we still get that kind of earth moving low end although you guys know I don't use a lot of low end in the tones and um, but it's not distorted so it doesn't go fuzzy keeping the mids mid static and we're bringing back a little bit of that extra uh, the, the treble as well so that the EQ hasn't changed that much overall so the tone of the guitars are still intact but it's just really fine tuning how the amp responds then we go out of that into the valve effects uh, the valve effects has an analog compressor in it which I'm using on the majority of sounds again it takes a compressor off the board or another unit and I'm using the valve effects for the majority of the time I'm using modulation sounds and some very simple delays in there as well but I'm massively keen on the chorus and detunes in this unit and the flanges and the phases aren't bad either so that's kind of of the main modulation unit then we move down next into the tc electronic d2 digital delay two tap delay i can create really unique sort of tap patterns on there and um, rhythmic kind of delays awesome delay unit it's maybe not as powerful as you know like the the lexicon pcms or something like that that i would really like one day but it, it's powerful enough for what i'm doing with delay at the minute you know I'm, i don't go too complicated with delay i just like a couple of simple tails a bit of chorus on there for a bit of tapey kind of sound and then finally we're finishing off in the Lexicon MPX100, one of Lexicon's much lower end kind of um, like lower end units. It's a multi-effects, there's a, a whole variety of stuff on here, detunes, echoes, uh, tremolos, rotaries, choruses, flanges, all that kind of stuff. I use it exclusively at the moment for just a little bit of reverb. So I don't use a lot of reverb and I didn't want to spend a fortune on a reverb unit. This does reverb, it, you know, it's, it's a Lexicon. Even the lower end stuff has has really good reverbs in there. And we go back out into in here, back in the effects loop, and then into the amp. Now the amps are using Ketner Trilogy, of course, been rocking this bad boy for probably 10 years now. Or very close to 10 years, 9, 10 years. And I'm absolutely, I, I still love it every day. I find new tones that I can use. Yeah, so the EQ setup might look a little kind of unconventional in a few in a few sounds. The, the ultra channel especially is what I use for my main kind of lead and, and rhythm tones. I've got the bass cut almost all the way off, the treble boosted up uh, to about 2 o'clock and the mid almost all the way on. But then of course that's that gets the sound out of the amp that I really like, a really thick mid-rangey punchy sound. And then I'm using the TL Audio EQ5013 to just kind of fine tune that a little bit more. In the preamp we're running tw um, 12 ex 7s there's four 12 ex 7s I'm using Electro Harmonics, uh, the gold pinout series. I've had those in there for a long time now, really love them. Back up to 100 watts, so last time I did a video several years ago I was running at 50 watts, which was great for a bit of lower breakup. Uh, lower volume break up bit of a sweeter kind of sound on the crunch channels i'm back up at 100 watts you get you do get a bit more sort of treble but you also get a lot more bloom and a lot more openness i don't get much chance to crank the amp um very often but when you do it's it's well worth having that 100 watts just so that the clean tones still say ultra clean uh, we've got Sovtech el34s in there at the moment and finally in the cabinetry we come out of an iron tone speaker cable which is just kind of hot off the press brand new made by iron tone it was zilla 212 um, it's not the fat boy it's just a slightly oversized 212 for a bit of extra low end it means i can cut a lot of low end in the eq and have the cab providing all that kind of natural low end sound that doesn't get too fuzzy or flubby i've got it open back at the minute it's got a three piece back if i'm gigging bigger stages i'll always put the, the piece on there and have it closed back just for a bit more of that kind of uh, directional and pressured sound but I, in in the house in the studio on the smaller gigs and practices i like the open back sound because it's just got that quote unquote three-dimensional kind of quality it just it just fills the room and i love it and that is it guys hope you enjoyed it we got a, a lot more pedals that i might run through to a later date we got a couple of arian sch ones various bob bird pedals 
um, Stanley Effects stuff, Valve Custom Drive, some prototype Iron Tone stuff. All that comes on and off the board in various different kind of, various times for various different reasons, depending on what sounds, what tones I'm going for, etc. All of those spare pedals, um, I've, I've sold quite a lot of the, the pedal collection off. The rest kind of get used in the studios, kind of studio outboard, if you like. The Arian SEH ones, can't be, can't be without those for me, me clean chorus sound, you know, so they get used quite a lot in the studio and at home jamming, etc. So guys, I hope this met your expectations. I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, plenty more stuff to come. I will do a video running through some more tones and stuff in the future once I've got the, uh, some more of the rack settings dialed in getting some really sweet sounds with this rig at the moment uh, please do link to your kind of gear videos uh, there's nothing I love more than watching people talk passionately about gear the gear they enjoy the tones they're getting etc um, so I hope you enjoyed this guys and until next time take it easy